The movie starts by showing a video of Maxon's childhood where she is performing a dance for the church. Now, she wants to become a big actress, which is why she has come to audition for a director. Maxon's audition goes very well because the director likes her acting, confidence, and attitude. After the audition, Maxon drives away and reaches her village, where her colleague invites her to a Hollywood party. However, Maxon declines the invitation and goes to shoot a scene. After shooting the scene, when she returns, she receives a call from her manager, who gives her the good news that she has been selected for the movie she auditioned for. She immediately goes to tell this news to her friend, who has a shop right below her apartment. Her friend is also very excited to hear the news. However, Maxon couldn't stay long because she had to go somewhere else. She goes to a place where she had to dance. She was dancing in an empty room with a mirror in front of her. A man, who could see her from behind the mirror, was getting mad with rage, as if he wanted to break the mirror and kill Maxon. After finishing her dance, Maxon leaves the place and meets another colleague who invites her to the same party for which she had been invited earlier. It was a party in the Hollywood Hills. Anyway, she declines the invitation again and leaves for home. The night was dark, but she walked with confidence as if she had no fear. While walking through a dark alley, a man blocks her path. Maxon was scared. A police car passed by, but she didn't shout for help. Instead, she pulled out a gun and pointed it at the man. The man, who was probably trying to scare Maxon, got frightened. Maxon forced him to strip down at gunpoint and then crushed several parts of his body with her heels before moving on. While leaving, she said to him, The last time someone tried to kill me like this, I crushed his skull. After reaching home, she watches a movie with her friend and then goes to sleep. In the middle of the night, the doorbell rings. When she goes to check, there's no one outside, but she finds an envelope left at her door. The man who left it quickly ran away. Maxon takes the envelope inside and finds a tape. When she plays it, she sees herself in it, with many adult scenes. It seemed like someone was trying to blackmail her. After this, we see Maxon's two colleagues who had gone to the Hollywood Hills party. They had invited Maxon as well, but they were kidnapped from the party. Their eyes and mouths were covered, and a video of them was being made. The man in leather clothes was doing all of this. The next morning, Maxon goes to the studio. The first movie she got was a horror movie, for which she had to undergo several get-ups, and they were now preparing to make a face mask for her. For this, a lot of wax was applied to her face, and she had to keep her eyes and mouth closed for a long time. As soon as she closed her eyes, it felt like a ghost was really standing behind her, putting its hand on her neck, ready to kill her. She almost suffocated to death, but before that, she managed to remove the fake mask and breathe. The scene cuts to a crime scene where two police detectives arrive because two bodies were found. These were the bodies of Maxon's colleagues, and after killing them, a strange symbol was made on their bodies. Meanwhile, after finishing her work, Maxon gets into her car to go home, and she finds a card in her ear with a number on it, saying, it would be better if we talked. Reluctantly, Maxon calls the number, and the person on the other end asks her to meet at a hotel. This person was a private detective who was hired by people to spy on others for money. In the evening, Maxon meets this man, who tells her that the person who was extracting information about her now wants to meet her, and if she doesn't meet, things will go very badly for her. He will expose all the wrong things she has done in the past, putting her future at risk. The detective also gives her a newspaper clipping with a report of a murder that took place in Texas. Seeing this, Maxon gets scared because she was behind this murder. When she gets home, she sees that the police detectives are at her house as well, investigating the murders of her colleagues. She didn't answer any of the detectives' questions because she was afraid they might link her to her past case, even though she had nothing to do with this case. The blackmailer had also trapped Maxon badly. Although she could have reported him to the police, she didn't because she was afraid she would get caught herself. So, she takes the tape left by the blackmailer and brings it to a friend, asking him to track it and find out who recorded it. Just then, she gets a call from her director, who wants to show her the movie set. They travel far out of the city to see the set, which was quite good, but Maxon sees a girl through a window. Maxon knew the girl wasn't really there. She was just haunting her because Maxon had killed that girl. 
The director tells Maxon that the producer doesn't want her to work in the movie because of her bad background, but the director likes her acting and tells Maxon to give her 100% and that she supports her. She says the movie will hit theaters and Maxon's fame will increase a lot. Maxon nods in agreement because she didn't want to miss this opportunity. When she leaves for home, she sees the same detective who had asked her to meet someone was following her. She gets angry, gets out of her car, and beats up the detective, telling him to stop following her or things will go very badly for him as well. After that, she drives to her manager's place because things had reached a point where she couldn't keep them to herself anymore. She tells her manager everything about how a man was blackmailing her and how a detective had been following her. The man knew everything about her past and threatened to expose her and ruin her future. The manager listens to everything and tells her to just focus on preparing for the movie and that he would handle the rest. Following her manager's advice, she decides not to meet the blackmailer and focuses on preparing for her movie. The script begins to unfold as the man, seeking revenge for being denied a meeting with Maxine, murders her friend in such a brutal manner that anyone witnessing it would be horrified. After committing the murder, he gets into the detective's car, revealing that the detective is assisting him in every possible way. The next morning, Maxine is shocked to see a crowd outside her apartment and is further stunned to learn that her friend has been murdered. The same stamp was found on her friend's body as on the bodies of her two previous colleagues. The police arrest Maxine because all three murder victims were in contact with her and all had similar stamps on their faces. The police urge Maxine to reveal everything she knows, warning her that if she doesn't cooperate, she might be the serial killer's next target, given how close the victims were to her. Despite the pressure, Maxine remains silent and returns to her studio, where her movie is being filmed. There, she meets a co-actor who boosts her confidence, assuring her that she will perform well in the movie. However, they can't discuss the movie much as the co-actor has to leave for a party in Hollywood Hills. Before leaving, the co-actor advises Maxine to follow the director's instructions closely. Before Maxine can finish her work and leave, the detective, who has been blackmailing her, arrives. This time, he is armed, and Maxine, terrified for her life, runs back to the house where the movie is being shot, narrowly escaping as security apprehends the detective outside. Inside, Maxine meets her director, who notices her fear and offers her the weekend off, but insists she resolve any problems in her life as she won't tolerate any disruptions in her work. Maxine takes this advice to heart and decides to end all the chaos in her life. That night, she attends a party where she knows the detective will be following her. She lures him into a secluded garage where her manager and another man are waiting. They knock the detective unconscious, put him in a car, and crush the car in a junkyard, eliminating all evidence of his death. With this small problem solved, Maxine feels relieved. Later, while at home, she remembers her co-actor, who had mentioned attending the Hollywood party. Maxine realizes that her co-actor might be in danger, as her previous two colleagues were killed after attending the same party. Worried, Maxine heads to Hollywood Hills, with the police detectives trailing her. When she arrives at the party location, she finds no party in progress but hears familiar voices inside. Investigating further, she discovers a video from her childhood playing, the same video shown at the beginning of the movie. Maxine enters the room where her colleagues were previously killed, suspecting it might be a trap. The blackmailer, whose face hasn't been revealed until now, is shown for the first time. It's Maxine's father. Maxine is shocked to see her father, who has been searching for her for years. He explains that he committed all those murders to stop Hollywood from corrupting people's minds with horror movies and leading them towards sin. To stop the sins and expose Hollywood, he believed the murders were necessary, leaving a stamp on the victims' faces. Maxine had come to save her co-actor, but she finds her dead already. She accidentally kicks a suitcase, causing it to tumble down the stairs, revealing the severed head of her co-actor. Before Maxine can comprehend the situation, her father knocks her unconscious and takes her to a special place. Believing that Maxine has lost her way, her father intends to perform an exorcism to cleanse her of all her sins. She is tied to a chair, surrounded by her father's followers, and the entire event is being recorded. Before her father can place the same stamp on her face as the other victims, the detectives arrive and foil his plans. A commotion ensues, 
with many followers killed by the detective's bullets, but Maxine's father escapes. The detectives chase him to the Hollywood Hills sign, where they finally catch him. Both the detectives and Maxine's father are severely injured, and her father collapses from exhaustion. Maxine, who had come to kill her father, hesitates when a police helicopter appears overhead. She realizes that killing her father, a notorious serial killer, would make her a hero and increase her fame even before her movie is released. Without further delay, she crushes her father's head, killing him. The scene cuts to some time later, showing the premiere of Maxine's movie. She has already become famous, just as she predicted, even before the movie's release. She is being interviewed, with thousands of people listening to her. The story concludes with Maxine's rising fame being highlighted.